In the Central American dry corridor, extreme weather conditions caused by climate change have prompted one of the largest human climate migrations the modern world has ever seen. Esto se vuelve una tragedia muy Lives and livelihoods destroyed. Como que está podre, While the world looks the other way. One farmer making the journey of a lifetime. Tengo una visión y quiero sacar a mis hijos adelante. Because when you have nothing left to lose, making one of the most dangerous journeys in the world a perder la vida. seems like a risk worth taking. of worsening weather conditions caused by the effects of climate change have devastated this part of Central America, turning what once was green mountains covered with trees and rich farmland into a wasteland. This region is called the Dry Corridor. The Dry Corridor is a region of relatively poor countries in Central America with large grain farming populations. Years of drought conditions followed by two hurricanes, Eta and Yota, which hit hard last November, devastated communities, leaving them on the edge of an economic precipice. My journey starts in Guatemala, in the farmlands outside of Jocotán. I'm on my way to see Gonzalo, a local farmer that has been heavily affected by the drought, forcing him and his family to make one of the most difficult decisions of their lives. Gonzalo, ¿cómo estás? Bien. ¿Qué tal? Disculpa la demora, hermano. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Señora, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Hola, niños. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Gonzalo is a maize and corn farmer who for years has successfully managed to support his wife Maria and four kids Eric, Wilson, Ingrid and Cindy. But the devastating effects of the recent droughts and hurricanes have made supporting his family almost impossible. Uno tiene que pensar por los, por los niños también, ¿no? porque es, es triste que los niños aguanten hambre. ¿no? ¿Qué han tomado de desayuno ahora? Café. ¿Nada más? Sí. ¿No han comido nada? Bien, bien. Ya comimos ahí, tortillas con frijolitas ahí. Tortillas con frijolitas. Sí. Gonzalo has made the difficult decision to leave his family behind and migrate to America to find work, just like his brother did a year and a half ago. ¿Quién? ¿Esa es, esa es la construcción de tu hermano? Sí, de mi hermano. Gonzalo's brother has made enough money working in the U.S. to upgrade his house. Gonzalo's brother is funding half the cost of Gonzalo's trip to the U.S., paid in installments. The other half is being covered by Gonzalo mortgaging his farmland to a loan shark. If his trip is unsuccessful, he could lose everything. He's risking his land, his well-being, and his ability to provide for his family in the future. Gonzalo, ¿y por dónde queda tu cultivo? Es de esta arriba. ¿Por aquí arriba? Sí. Aquí hay frijol tiraje. No, está, ya no está bueno. ¿No se puede comer? No, no se puede comer. Gonzalo 
estoy algo así por, por mi familia que los voy a abandonar, ¿verdad? Pero... Yo sé que tengo una, tengo una visión y tengo una mira que quiero sacar a mis hijos adelante. To find out what the future holds for the farmers around here, I'm going to meet agronomist Circe Cordon. Hola Circe, ¿cómo estás? ¿Qué tal Guillermo? Mucho gusto. Bien. Bien. Circe is also the regional director for the Ministry of the Environment. She's been investigating the impact that large-scale agribusiness and in particular melon farms have been having on the quality of the soil in this area. Sacaron el bosque espinoso para poder plantar melón. Entonces hay un efecto climático ahí y las precipitaciones convectivas no suceden. Seco. Se ha secado por los efectos del cambio climático. Alta temperatura, erosión del suelo, eh, sequías, ¿verdad? Deforestation here has reduced the chances of rainfall and exposed the land to the rising temperatures. Circe has come to examine the quality of the soil on this farmer's land. The news is not good. Como que hay piedra. Cuando ya no llueve, hasta se raja el suelo, entonces se contraen y lo que causa es ahorcamiento de la raíz. La alta evapotranspiración hace que se pierda la humedad del suelo y entonces los suelos se van secando. Ya no son aptos para poder producir cultivos. Suelos empobrecidos, eh, cosechas perdidas. With the future for Guatemalan farmers looking so bleak, Growing numbers of them are packing their bags and migrating to the U.S. Today is a big day for Gonzalo. He's leaving his wife and kids. The trip will last months. To my surprise, Gonzalo's wife was nowhere to be seen. No, pues ella salió porque no quería ver cómo no que saliera, ¿verdad? Ella sabe que las mujeres como que no quisiera que uno saliera aquí de Guatemala, ¿verdad? Sí, sí, hay que dar no, sí, 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 Gonzalo just said goodbye to his kids. His wife left. She couldn't bear their farewell. He's uh, quite sad to see that he needs to leave his home and his kids and his family behind because simply they don't have enough money to eat. I give him a phone with a camera so we can keep in touch and he can send me some video updates. A veces uno le da tristeza que los, los niños de uno igual, que yo creo que ellos van a estar más felices también. Pero sabiendo que sus pues, pasos trabajando, echándole ganas duro allá también para que ellos pueden, pueden comer aquí o tal. To my surprise, Gonzalo's human smuggler, known as a coyote, agrees to be interviewed in a roadside taco bar just north of Jocotán. ¿Y un viaje cuánto puede más o menos costar? ¿Qué promedio? 12 mil dólares de 15 o 20 días están en la frontera. For that price, the migrants get three attempts and the coyote was keen to point out the risks they were all taking. Hay mucho narco, hay mucho crimen organizado, asaltantes, 
mucha gente diría, oye, usted es un traficante de personas, este, usted está haciendo plata de personas con necesidades. No, qué? no es eso. Eh, la gente quiere, tiene necesidad de irse y, y nosotros tenemos los contactos para que ellos puedan lograr irse. Me ayudo yo económicamente, no mucho, pero para ir comiendo. Y ellos también pueden llegar también y vamos comiendo juntos, lo que sea, ahora. From Hokotan, the Coyote leaders north. We were heading up towards Poptun, then west to Bethel on the border with Mexico. Salon, the human smuggler, and the car in front of us. They went through the first checkpoint with no problems at all but they still have two more to go before they get to the Mexican border. At the second checkpoint, they're stopped by police. Buenas. Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Ahí vamos a la vuelta a la a la Betel. No tengo pena, todos modos. Solo. Vaya, está bien. Safely through. The coyote then calls a contact he knows to ask about the road ahead. His contact is a policeman. Hello, how are you? How are you, Ali? Look, I wanted to ask you how the thing is, if it can happen. Yes, it can happen. Free? Oh, my friend, who is a policeman who is here in the part of Petén, is free now. There's no one here. I had to part ways with Gonzalo before we reached the Guatemala-Mexico border. It's too risky to be seen filming with him and the coyote when they crossed into Mexico. We plan to keep in touch by phone and meet up further into Mexico. The border with Mexico is just there. It's a dodgy looking town. Everybody's looking at us checking our car. Gonzalo will be handed over to uh, the Mexican cartels by the Coyote now, and he has at least three weeks in front of him before he reaches uh, the US border. Now the most dangerous part of the journey begins. Let's hope Gonzalo doesn't get double-crossed. The next morning, I pick up Gonzalo's route. Even in broad daylight, a steady flow of migrants are crossing here through Mexico's back door. Following just a few hours behind him, I make the crossing myself. My boat, there are at least one dozen migrants. I don't know how is that they are going to come through here with our papers, but We'll see. To my surprise, there were no Mexican authorities anywhere to be seen. According to the Coyote, Gonzalo will be taken by the cartel from Bethel north by road to the city of Palenque. Hola. Just before we reach the military checkpoint, I notice a group of migrants switching vehicles up ahead. He just boarded five taxis here and they are going inside to the mountains to round the checkpoints. Buenas. 
Bueno, señor, somos periodistas. Hemos cruzado de Guatemala. Ya está mi pasaporte. By the time I reached my hotel in Palenque that evening, I'd heard nothing all day from Gonzalo. I've been trying to call him since early this morning and his phone has been off all day. Um, I'm slightly worried, to be honest, because um, he's now in the hands of the Mexican cartels and he's probably doing at the moment uh, the most dangerous part of the street. To find out more about the route and the risk Gonzalo will be taking through this part of Mexico, I've come to meet migration expert Ruben Figueroa. Gordo, how are you? Ruben's organization has been recording an exponential rise in migration through here recently. They estimate nearly 150,000 people in just three months. Esto se vuelve más una tragedia humanitaria. Y no vemos ningún organismo internacional que esté aquí hablando con ellos. Y el gobierno no está para ayudarnos a nosotros. Ellos están para ellos entre los mismos que tienen más, uh -huh. pero no para los pobres. Both the Guatemalan and Mexican governments have vowed to crack down on corruption and the exploitation of migrants. But according to these men, the migrant money train is too tempting for some. Las autoridades les cobran a ustedes? La verdad, la verdad. país de Guatemala, si los Lambes y yo entrando a Guatemala me quitaron como 3,000 pesos en un año. Lambe, y uno lo da nomás porque quiere cruzar. Most of the people here have told me that they had to bribe themselves to reach this part of Mexico. They have been paying the police, they have been paying the migration authorities. Clearly, everybody is making money out of them. This is a huge business. I wanted to know what's likely to be happening to Gonzalo, who was now traveling with the Mexican cartel's Coyote. Puede que tenga más posibilidades que que que, que los migrantes que van eh, sobre las vías, pero no quita el peligro. Son caminos peligrosos, hay asaltantes, violadores, secuestradores, en autos, en vanes, los lleva, los suben en trailers repletos de migrantes son maltratados que pueda perder la vida puede morir asfixiado dentro del trailer o puede morir a manos de policías a manos de otro cartel es uno de los viajes más peligrosos del mundo Rubén then showed me some shocking crime scene images of a group of migrants who've been massacred like Gonzalo, they would be traveling with a coyote, but they hadn't paid the right people off. In Tamaulipas, más de 16 eh, migrantes eh, murieron calcinados, los quemaron. Incluso el coyote iba ahí, como tal, ¿no? ¿Al coyote lo mataron también? Es la información que hay. Y algunos tenían eh, tiros en, en, en la gracia. cabeza. Sí, y luego de eso, les echaron eh, gasolina y les prendieron fuego. Twelve Mexican police officers were found to have participated in the massacre. Pero lo más fuerte de todo esto es que las autoridades forman parte tanto en el tráfico como también en los asesinatos. After seeing all these people and talking with Rubén, I'm actually more worried about Gonzalo. Ruben mentioned all the things that the human traffickers do to the people that they're moving. 
I just hope that he can make it safely to the US border. After two weeks of travel, presuming he's made it safely, the last stop on Gonzalo's journey to the U.S. is the Mexican border town of Reynosa, the center of a cartel turf war. Every day, thousands of migrants arrive here, hoping to achieve the American dream. This area is completely controlled by the Mexican cartels. I'm here to meet Miguel Turriza, who has been reporting on the fate of migrants hoping to cross into the U.S. from here. <laughs> but not everyone makes it. nuestro famoso Rio Bravo. Allá es Texas. Y allí cruzan. A uno los pueden agarrar, pero no a todos. Gonzalo is due to make his final payment to the cartel coyote here before attempting to cross. But cartels often change the terms of the deal at the very last minute. Para, para cruzar al otro lado tienes que pagar. Aquí el cartel te dice yo te cruzo por 1500 dólares. Pero si quieres asegurarte que no te agarren en esta orilla y te lleven a, en un momento dado a, ahí más adentro para que no te agarre la patrulla, te voy a cobrar 3500 o 5000 o 7000. Sí, ya más adentro. But if you don't have the money, there are other ways of paying your debt to the cartels. Muchísimas gracias. Buenos días. The Senda de Vida Hostel is a refuge for migrants. Ramirez and her son arrived here without any money, but the cartel still wanted them to pay for the crossing. Me quisieron eh, intimidar en cuestiones de por el niño, como quererme lo robar. Un lugar para trata de prostitución y de drogas, y los niños venta de órganos. There are clearly no depths the cartels won't stoop to in order to make money out of the migrants. But what about Gonzalo? Se venía con un coyote que lo iba a ir llevando hasta la frontera, hasta aquí. Cuando vienes con un coyote es peligrosísimo porque ese es un pedazo de carne que vale tanto. Y si piensas que tú puedes pagar más, te van a pedir más y te van a pedir más y te van a pedir más. Casi ¿verdad? que se convierte en un secuestro cuando llegan acá, ¿no? Prácticamente. ¿Sí te secuestran? Sí. Claro, es un negocio muy grande de dinero, de carne, dinero. A costa del sufrimiento de las personas más pobres. Dolor, sufrimiento y muerte también, desafortunadamente. This is the last stop on the climate migrants' long and difficult journey to the U.S., and they hope a better future. For people that suffer from such poverty, it's astonishing how much money they have generated for so many others along the way. Not all of them will make it. Many will be stopped and sent back home. Others will simply disappear at the hands of the Mexican cartels. After weeks of hearing nothing, Gonzalo finally calls. Guillermo. Hola, Gonzalo. ¿Qué pasó? Sí, me agarraron la negra y no pude cruzar por allá. Ahorita estoy pensando otro viaje, pero tengo que convencer a mi hermano, ¿verdad? A ver si él todavía me echa la mano o no. 